What's going on guys and gals Galga back here and today I'm bringing you a brand new clash royale video today We're gonna be highlighting the rage spell as you see here I have a level 2 rage which gives you a 40% boost to attack speed and troop movements uh, This is the deck I'm going to be using but before we jump into the replay I have of me using this deck I want to show some key highlights that the rage spell is able to do for you Here's a great example of cards that do really well under the rage we have the three musketeers tried to get counter with the one elixir skeletons and then they would immediately obliterate those proceed to take down the tower they're out of range of the cannon and we'll move on to the next one here's another great example you see we have the giant coming in here we're going to support it with the musketeer then we got the minions the five elixir minion or the the five elixir minions under rage are incredible you see this golem coming in here, and they're just obliterating his health. In literally three seconds, the golem has been broken. Another two and a half seconds, and the golem is completely gone. Here you'll see we got some barbarians coming in, uh, supported with a wizard there. He's going to drop off barbarians of his own, but I get them underneath the rage. We completely obliterate his. He tries to drop minions. Wizard again takes those out, and then we're going to end up taking that tower with ease. And then you can see here, as we take out the one tower on the left, we've got some barbs and another wizard coming in. He's going to skeleton army that. I drop off a hog rider, some five elixir minions. He counters with barbs. I rage up that entire group of troops with eight seconds left. They managed to take the entire tower, uh, the crown tower down in only two seconds. So that's just a great example of how well rage can really affect a game. All right, now we're going to jump into a full replay here. We've got that deck that I was talking about in the beginning. Uh, I'm going to show you some great examples of the way the rage spell can be used on offense as well as defense. Make sure to pay attention to the defensive uses of the rage spell. I think this could be game changing in my personal opinion. So he's going to start off dropping the giant. I'm going to drop a Valkyrie followed up by a musketeer. Kind of a smaller tank with some good DPS behind it. He's going to counter that with barbarians leaving his giant pushing the lane alone. We're going to go ahead and rage up our crown tower as well as our bomber to help melt him down a little quicker. Then we got some Spear Goblins going in to help take down that entire group of Barbarians that he dropped. Uh, if only the Spear Goblins would have went to the left to take out that P.E.K.K.A. He probably wouldn't have got that one swing off. Then we're just going to ignore this Wizard coming down the left side. He's only going to get two shots off before he's taken down. And now we've got an Elixir advantage here, so it's going to be on us to push first. Go ahead and drop this Giant off. And now we're just waiting for our Elixir to build back up and see how he tries to counter us before we decide what method we're going to use to continue to push this lane here. We see he drops a giant. We're still at a decent elixir advantage, even though he has that pump. We drop these minions. I'm trying to bait out his arrows, which I know he has. So here those come. Pew! There goes down the minions go. I'm going to rage up that giant, because that giant on his own inside the rage will do a really good amount of damage. Uh, I tried to follow up with the spear goblins to help take out those barbs, but they did not do as much damage as I thought they would. And then this giant that he dropped on the left-hand side is doing some pretty decent work with that, even though that Valkyrie is hitting him. We drop this bomb tower just to counter the barbarians so he doesn't get full use off of them pushing that tower on the right-hand side. And then we're going to arrow those goblins. We accidentally activate his crown tower. We're going to drop a little oops right there because that might make things a little harder. He's already counter pushing with a giant and a wizard. So what we're going to do is we're just going to wait for our elixir to build up and we're going to start building a defensive push. We drop off a musketeer and a valkyrie. Then we're going to drop off these goblins and we instantly rage all of it. The bomb tower, the goblins, the valkyrie, and the musketeer. They just completely obliterate that giant. We throw some minions in there. Down goes all his barbarians like nothing. He arrows that, but we've still got a pretty decent push going on the left-hand side. So what we're going to do now is we're going to push the right-hand side that has less health while he's still worried about that uh, left-hand tower. We got the giant musketeer going in. Tower's only got 400 health, no matter what, we're taking that down. He's trying to push this left lane with another giant. We drop a bomber, a Valkyrie, and more goblins. And then as soon as we get the chance, boom, we rage him up again, and we're gonna obliterate his entire push, the giants, the barbarians, and the baby P.E.K.K.A. Even our spear goblins were about to outmatch his spear goblins. 
So I just think this is a great example of how useful the raid spell can be on offense and defense. Again, guys, here is the deck that I used in that previous video. If you want to give it a shot, go ahead. It's right there on screen. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, highlighting certain spell cards or certain troop cards, let me know down below in the comment section. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you did enjoy. And I will catch you guys in the next episode.